Welcome to the second video in a series of videos on configuring Kerberos authentication for Access Manager. In this second video, I'm going to be covering configuring the identity server for the Kerberos authentication. As you can see here, um, there are many different topics in this section. Um, I'm going to be covering uh, these first five in this video. Uh, the first three here, enabling logging for Kerberos transaction, uh, configuring identity server for Active Directory and creating the authentication class method and contract. Uh, we can all do in the same place at the same time. So let's go over that really quick. Go over here to my administration console and go into my identity server cluster and edit. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to configure logging for Kerberos transactions. That's done under auditing and logging tab. And we just set our application component logger to debug. And that's it. Let's go back here to the local tab, which is the second thing we go over, which is adding user store to your identity server. Now, I've already got my Active Directory user store added. So if you don't have yours added yet, take a few minutes and do that now. And once you have that done, the next thing we need to do is create our authentication class, method, and contract. Now you have to do these in order. You have to have a class before you can have a method, before you can have a contract. So let's go and create ourselves a Kerberos class. Display name, we're going to be real original. Call it Kerberos class. And we have several pre-configured Java classes and not basic. We're going to choose Kerberos. We're going to go next. Now your service principal name should match the service principal name that you created in Active Directory for your identity server. This is our default realm that we plug in. You need to change it to your realm. This is the path to the bcslogin.conf. That's the next step that we're going to cover is creating that comp file. Um, this is a symbolic link path is what it is. So uh, later on, I'll show you what the real path is. Uh, your Kerberos KDC IP address, mine is 158. Because my default user store is uh, eDirectory, it puts in my IP address for my default user store. So be mindful of that. I use the user principal name attribute. You might need something different and that's fine. So we finish that and we now have our Kerberos class. Now we'll go to methods and we'll create ourselves a Kerberos method. Again, we'll be real original. Kerberos method. The class we want to use is the class we just created. And we want to use our Active Directory user store for that. The property section down here, um, I will cover in later videos. This is where you will set up a custom login page that you want to use for uh, fallback. And also this is where you configure your Kerberos fallback. We'll finish that. So now we have our method. Let's go create our Kerberos contract. And once again, real original names, Kerberos contract. URI, I'm just going to call it Kerb URI. You can pretty much put whatever you want in there. If you're using a password explanation servlet, you can put that here and all these other items. We, of course, want to use our Kerberos method we just created. My ID that I put in is just curb, and then I'll assign a Kerberos image to it. Finish, and we're done. So those are those first three items of documentation. Now we're going to click OK here. And then we're going to update and push out all those updates to our IDP servers. And this will take a few moments. While we wait for that, let's go back over to the documentation. The next step is to create the BCS login configuration file, and then we verify the whole Ver Kerberos configuration. All right, so let's make sure we're current before we proceed with that part. We're good. I use WinSCP on my Windows workstation because my IDP server is on Linux. Here is the actual path in uh, NAM 4.3 to the security directory where the bcslogin.conf file is and where we previously copied our key tab file. Uh, as you can see here, we provide you with 
a handy template. And all we need to change here is your principal. Mine. Is this idp.jw4.com? All right. So now I'm going to save this. And then all we need to do is copy it to that security directory. And that's it. Um, the next thing we need to do is just verify our configuration, which to do that, I have a putty session open to my IDP. And I like to clear out my Catalina log file before I restart the identity server so that I have a nice clean file. Especially if your server's been up for a while, you could have a pretty gigantic file to look through. So we'll clear that and then we will restart our IDP server. Uh, now this can take a few minutes to fully initialize the identity server, so I'm going to let it do that and not waste your time and I'll be back. Alright, it's been a few minutes, so let's check this out here. To make this quick and easy, all you need to do is search for the word commit. As you can see here, we have a commit succeeded. And this tells me that the Kerberos initialization was successful, that the IDP server is able to talk to and authenticate with the Kerberos KDC server. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, in my next video, I'm going to cover configuring your clients for Kerberos authentication, like IE and Firefox specifically. So again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.